There, right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go. It's adorable. Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Every time I think I might have a day to kind of just chill and work, something cool gets reported and I'm like, I need to go see that. So there's a purple sandpiper report in Manitowoc, gonna meet up with some friends, then go up and hopefully it is still around. It was seen this morning at like eight and then again at around noon. Um, so hopefully it'll still be hanging out. This is a bird I've never seen before. Ryan's got to see it here when I was in Louisiana. So I'm really excited for the possibility to find it. So let's go see if we can get it. I met up with my friends, Chris, Colette, and Nathaniel and we made the nearly hour and a half drive up to Manitowoc with under an hour of sunlight left to relocate the sandpiper. Just arrived in Manitowoc, shout out Charlie Barron's Manitowoc Minute. Um, it is very snowy out and we're gonna walk down this path all the way to the lighthouse and that's where the bird's been seen. So we got a bit of a walk, probably about 10 minutes. We're gonna kind of be rushing to uh, catch the last light here. We started walking towards the lighthouse and stopped briefly to identify a few small birds passing by on the beach. They turned out to be American pipits. Further down, we also got some quick looks at an American mink. American minks are carnivorous and can be found in nearly every state. This one seemed to be quite curious and was checking out rock crevices for food. After our brief intermissions, we continued on towards the lighthouse passing a few birders who said the purple sandpiper was still out there. As we entered the narrow path, it felt like a cinematic moment of destiny, and the anticipation was building. Getting a lifer here? Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. Kind of uh, getting excited and you can feel the adrenaline going. It's like, yeah, lifer. It's so close. It's so close. Well, let's go get it then. <laughs> it's on the rocks to the right. We were just told somebody walking out that there is the purple sandpiper still here. Just definitely have that anticipation. Just need like one look to clinch it. There, right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go. It's adorable. So literally right down here on these rocks is my life for purple sandpiper. It is just probing kind of the algae on these rocks, but it is absolutely adorable and super cooperative. It does not care at all about people being here. What an awesome bird for my lifer. The purple sandpiper is a plump shorebird with a curved bill that is normally found on rocky and wavy shorelines. They have the northernmost wintering range of all shorebirds and are more common the further up you go on the Atlantic coast. In non-breeding plumage, purple sandpipers have grayish feathers with a purple sheen, a white stomach speckled with gray, and bright orange legs and base of their bill. Breeding adults are more mottled, including more brown and yellow tones. Purple sandpipers feed mostly on small invertebrates, as well as algae, berries, seeds, leaves, and more, and they can often be seen feeding by sight or probing the shoreline with their bill. Nests are made in a scrape lined with feathers and plant material, with about three to four eggs laid per nest. Purple sandpipers can live to be over 20 years old. That is so cool. It's just been hopping from rock to rock, feeding. What an incredible little bird. That was awesome. Purple sandpiper, excellent bird. <laughs> yeah, excellent views, worth the drive up, worth the snow blowing in our face. Good bird. Awesome, cooperative little dude. Along with the purple sandpiper, there was also a bald eagle being harassed by some gulls, some flyby mergansers, a distant great blackback gull, and some closer American pipits. The American pipit is a small songbird that's at home in open areas such as agricultural fields, tundra, or lakeshores. 
They can be found on multiple continents and breed further north, moving south during the non-breeding season. In parts of Asia, they are actually called the buff-bellied pipit, although they are the same species as the American pipit. They feed mostly on small invertebrates. We watched the purple sandpiper until the light started to fade, and we had our fill of the cold wind blowing off the lake. When we reached the main path again, it was impossible not to still feel electrified by the experience. Oh man, that was epic. We just got back from walking down. The purple sandpiper is still hanging out, but it like came even closer to us. It was just feeding. It didn't seem to care about us at all. What an awesome uh, experience with that bird. Really glad we decided to come out here. It is frigid, <laughs> so I'm happy that we are kind of <laughs> gonna go back to the car, but like that's the kind of thing you're like, it's so cool. You're just like, when do I leave? Like I have awesome views of this bird. I don't know when I'm ever gonna get this again. How long do I stay here? So we stayed pretty much as long as we could until the light started to fade. There was a bunch of some pipits hanging out too. Um, yeah, what a great day. On the way out, we noted some late in the season Northern shovelers and appreciated the holiday feeling with the snow mixed with the thrill of the chase. I'm so pumped right now. That was so cool. Those views are amazing. It's like kind of Christmassy out. Uh, there's just something about like chasing a, a rare bird, being successful, that just makes you feel so content. I'm like, I am ready to just chill. We had an awesome adventure. I can't wait for the next one. All in all, we had a great time finding the purple sandpiper in Manitowoc, and it was the perfect experience for my lifer. Special thanks to Chuck S., who originally spotted the bird the previous day, and to those who continued to report it. What's your favorite experience you have seeing a bird for the first time? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.